What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to thank you guys so much for all the amazing support during my journey of running every single day for 365 days. I've received so many questions about this journey and what happened during it. So this video is going to be a full Q&A. It might even be broken into two parts because it might be long. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get after it. The popular question I've gotten from everybody is, will I still continue running every single day after hitting the year mark? And you guys already should have an idea about that. The answer is 100% yes. And uh, I'm going to be running every single day and I have been. In fact, today marks day 374. But now the difference is going to be, now I'm going to be more focused into doing races like 5K, 10K, half marathon, and marathon. That would be the ultimate goal. And also, I was getting into like running for a charity or something, like for a cause. That's going to be something that I'm going to push forward to. Now that I've proved to myself I could run every single day for a year, I won't stop. The ground won't stop. But now I'm going to do more into it. Now I'm going to put my energy toward other things with the run. Another question, popular question I've been receiving is, was I ever sick during running this whole year? And the answer is no. And I will not say because I, I was running, I was never sick, or I was vegan or anything because... My whole life, I never really got sick. That was one of the things that was always with me. I never had any issues, any cold, little things like that. It was never an issue with me. So that could be one of the reasons why I never got sick. And now you add the proper nutrition of eating well, will probably the chances for me to get sick was all gone. Um, I would get a little bit of headache here and there. I've had times where I have headaches, but as soon as I get running, the headache completely goes away. And I'm a kind of person, when I have a bad headache, all I have to do is go exercise and it literally goes away. It doesn't work for everybody, but it was a case for me. If I were ever sick, would I still run? Hell yeah, because I'm just like, I've came so far. I, even if I'm going back to, to the, the, the beginning, like I said, the 10 minute minimum, even if it came down to that, I'm gonna make sure I get out there and get it done. Um, and also, I got a question about, is running shoes very important? In the beginning, I didn't really think it was because I was running in any of my shoes that was you could wear to do workout with or whatever or train or casually so it didn't bother me it didn't phase me at all i'd run comfortably until my really good friend gave me a proper running shoes just as a gift he didn't even know that i needed one or anything i didn't need one and when i got that i realized how important running shoes were because that shoe was so comfortable the first day i put it on i felt like i was on cloud nine it was so soft and comfortable and i didn't even want to like stop wearing it it was so to answer that question yes Running shoes are very important, and if you feel like you don't know what's proper, go to a running shoe store that could help you out, and the area, the surfaces that you run in, they might be able to give you a better idea what's best for you. So definitely consider running shoes. When I run, do I go a certain range, um, speed, and make sure that I, I cover a certain amount of time frame before I stop? I always, in the beginning, was just to get out there and just to do a time a minimum time and get it done with. I never really worried about pace, I never really worried about my distance, but eventually that got into the process. I got warmed up to it, I got comfortable. So when I would run, I would be out there anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour. And my pace actually, in the beginning was in the eight minutes, and then next thing you know, I for the half of the year, I'm running in a six minute pace. And um, in terms of the, the distances, distances really, I just, just keep running. I don't really have like an idea how far I'm gonna go. I just keep going till I feel like, you know what, I felt good, let me turn back around and then come all the way back home. So that's the answer to that. How much weight have I lost? That's a big question that I've been receiving. Um, it was quite a bit in the beginning. I think it's one of those things when your body has to get used to an intense workout, when you're losing weight, it happened rapidly and then your body adapts to the situation and you maintain a certain amount of weight that, that's desirable for your body. When I started this journey, I was around 176 pounds and then now to today I'm fluctuating between 158 and 162. Another question is do I do any particular stretching prior to run or post run? I don't do any stretching before I run. I just literally ease my way into the run and as I get going my body warms up and I pick up the pace during the run to make up for the time loss in the beginning. And when I do come back I do recovery. Um, I foam roll. I use my roll recovery. You guys probably have seen that on my Instagram if you follow me. Just to flush out my body. And the most important part is I refuel my body with whole foods. Everybody asks me about my diet too. So diet is very important. 
I nutri I, I I put nutrients in my body that can help me re recover quicker, so I don't just have to, have to depend on stretching or foam rolling because that makes a lot of more a lot of the differences between you being stable and healthy throughout your run. What is my post run recovery tip? Same thing, eating well, recovery, foam roll, and then the stretching. Do I do yoga five times a week when I can? And um, that does my stretching for me. So I'm not a big fan into just sitting down and stretching. I get it other ways, like yoga and when I foam roll and eating well. Those are my, my recovery tips for everybody or f for what I do for myself. Also, everybody's like asking about my running watches. I got the Apple Series 3 with Nike Run. This is amazing. I loved it and I still love it. The first time I've started running, I had the, the first generation which was also amazing so they literally upgraded it and it got even 10 times better so I actually have proof of running every single day for over a year on this watch it maintained your pace, your distance and every little workout you do and this is GPS based, it's very accurate in fact sometimes I would short myself with the distance I run because I'm like I don't trust this thing if it's accurate and then I would take my car and drive around the same distance that I run and it's very accurate, it's the same distance I even went to the Apple store for them to explain me the technology, why this is very accurate and it's awesome and I think you guys should give it a try. It's the Apple Series 3 with Nike Run. A lot of people have asked also about losing muscle running every single day. Um, in the beginning for me, I was already big, so what this did for me, it leaned me out. Um, I do have a video of what I do in trying to maintain muscle, so I do do body weight stuff, push up, pull ups and such things to keep my muscle, but it all just basically fuel again, you put the proper nutrient and then you do a little work like that, you will not lose your muscle. I think it depends how you do the whole running thing. So I do go to the gym, but I don't go lift heavy weights. I do go to the gym just to maintain a little bit of strength. Being an athlete, was I always good with cardio prior to this run every day or it's just something that I got better with? Um, I never liked running, being an athlete. Soccer, you cannot play the game without running. I like the sprinting part, like 100, 300 yards. I wasn't a distant guy. so. I would say I was okay at cardio, I wasn't the best, especially long distance, and then uh, this journey actually made me better with cardio, it made me a better runner, because I was never this good of a runner, I was a good soccer runner, where we sprint, we jog, but this going long distance, I wasn't great at it, so it definitely helped me um, shape that part of my physicality. Do I think I can run a half marathon or, or a marathon this year? That's, I, I think I can. Um, I'm waiting to get into the New York Marathon, hopefully Boston too next year. And that's something that will be a goal of mine to accomplish. Someone said, I don't like running less than 30 minutes, and, uh, but if they do run too, they do a head workout. Do I do a head workout during my run? That was actually one of the things that kept me motivated. I would do a chase the runner. I told you guys this game and other videos. When I see a runner ahead of me, my goal is to run as fast as I can, catch up to them, and when I get to them now, I make sure that they don't catch up to me. So that little game kind of became a hit workout because I'm sprinting and I'm slowing down to my normal pace and I'm keeping up with that. Or I'll do mailbox to mailbox when I'm in neighborhoods. If I see a mailbox, I'll sprint to that one and then slow it down a little bit and keep going until I see the next mailbox. So I actually do incorporate a hit workout in my runs at times and it's amazing because it brings up another level to your endurance and your stamina. And I would definitely recommend it too. How do I get faster for shorter distance? I think SAQ is very important. SAQ is speed, agility, quickness. That's what we always did as soccer players. Football players do it. Any, any athlete pretty much do it to be fast. You got to do your agility, your speed work, your quickness, explosive stuff, jumping, explosiveness going forward. So all those ladders, things like that will get you fast. It will, it will get you fast. No, no doubt about that. You just have to keep doing it. So give that a try. SAQ exercises will be the answer to that. What do I tell myself on a lazy day or I don't want to get up? Yes, there's times when I don't want to go running, but I know I'll get the run done. It's just that the, I'm just lazy. I'm not feeling like getting up immediately. I just tell myself, you can do this, Hella. You came a long way from starting from nothing, day one to this day. So you're not going to let this get to you. And I also think about like my capability, being able to run, I have my legs, God has given me all these features that I have and I just pep talk to myself and also another part of it is when I think about the supporters, you guys specifically, I'm like you guys are behind me, supporting me throughout this journey and right away the laziness go away and the best runs are usually when I'm lazy to get up 
I would just be like, oh, I don't really want to go running right now. I'll go later. But I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go just get it out of the way. As soon as I go, those run ends up being my best run, the best pace. It always happens like that. I don't know what it is, but I love it. So that's the way that I get over laziness to get going. How do I overcome soreness? I don't really get sore. I, in the beginning, like maybe the first week I was sore to, because my body was adapting to everything. Adapting to everything. But it got to a point I didn't get sore at all. I never did. I didn't have any knee pain. Everybody's asking about that or pining on hard surfaces. I never did. Again, recovery is important and food. I think that helped with that. But if I go do like, I go to the gym and I'm like doing my curve run and I see someone like squatting heavy, I'm like, this guy's making me feel like lifting a little bit of weight. And I go and put a little bit of rack just to feel a little bit. And then the next day I'll feel a little bit of tightness in that area that I worked on. Usually that would be the reason I get soreness, but just from running every single day, I never really got sore. My body just adapts to it, to the whole thing. Technique while running. People ask about that. The me if you go to any runner or any, any sprinter, they will tell you, you gotta keep your body upright. That's the main important part. And after that, they will tell you, you gotta activate your core. I've actually trained with a US in track field guy. He was a champion, he won many races. He would teach me this. Your core is very important. You keep your core engaged, you're running is much easier. And now you're breathing. You gotta breathe in well and breathe in out. It got to a point I got so well with my breathing. Every step I was taking, it was like deep breath in, out. Literally every step, it was like in sync with each other. So that's something that would help you with your run. And it makes the run so much easier. You feel comfortable and you feel like, oh, I can just keep going. It feels like that. So give that a try. Focus on engaging your core, keeping your body upright, and then focus on your breathing. Am I going to increase my daily mileage? I'm um, having complete over 2,800 miles in a year. Um, my goal is always to better myself to improve, so I will try to do that, and I think I should be able to do that without a problem. So we'll see how that goes. And many questions that people ask, being a soccer player, playing professionally, am I still playing soccer, or am I playing on a team? The answer right now is no. I am preparing in case any opportunity comes out, but um, I did play a couple seasons ago, and we'll see what happens from here. Do I do yoga on a daily basis? Um, yes, I do yoga about five times a week, um, depending on my schedule, but I make sure that I go to that. It's actually as important to me as running. I, I felt so much better when I put in yoga into my lifestyle, so yoga is a must. If you haven't done yoga ever in your life, please give it a try. It's a great workout and you feel really good mentally and physically. How much do I lift? I actually don't lift that much. When I used to lift, I used to lift really heavy. I used to squat heavy. But now when I lift, it's very light and then more body weight workout. And I still have my strength and now I'm more agile without being too heavy. And lean too at the same time. How do I um, deal with calluses? I've actually always had calluses playing soccer. When you wear soccer cleats or football cleats or whatever cleats, you build these calluses around your big toe area because you're always pushing off of it. Um, we had a shaver, it was like a blade, you shave it off, and it's really weird, it's kind of nasty, but it's so much layer of it that you don't even feel pain, you just shave it off. Um, but this time now, I built a little bit on the bottom of my feet, but not so much big that it's painful or anything. But if you have big ones and it's starting to hurt, I would get one of those callus shavers just to start shaving it off because when it builds up, there's also pressure on the bottom of it that creates the pain. So start shaving it off little by little and uh, that should help you deal with it. Well, what muscle changes do I notice? The muscle changes that I've noticed the most was my core. My abs got so much more defined. I've always had abs but it was, I had to maintain a certain amount of working out lifestyle to keep it but my abs literally got so defined because I'm always engaging and doing my runs. So I'm getting ab workouts with six mile runs a day, seven miles run a day and also I do abs on top of that. So that's the big changes. But I always joke around, like, I think I got runner's butt because I felt like my butt got a little smaller. That's the only thing that I've noticed that I lost muscle. But I think it's just me because I always judge myself, like, trying to improve myself the best way possible. But when I ask people who've seen me, like, is my butt small? They're like, no, it's fine. But to me, it feels smaller. So that would be the negative um, muscle changes that I've experienced. This is, has nothing to do with the running. Someone said, how did you meet your wifey? Um, we met in 2000. Um, 12 at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Um, so this school is two hours outside of Boston. What happened was being a soccer player, I had training on a Saturday, on a Sunday and then we were going out on a Saturday. So I was the designated driver for everybody and my best friend happened to invite her friend, um, her friend over and she came with her friend. 
So everybody was wasted, so we were the only two sober people and I was the driver. So we ended up chatting and the rest was history. So maybe we'll do another video on that to tell you guys more detail. How much did soccer impacted my life? Soccer made my life, literally. Um, soccer gave me the opportunity to be better as a person, to be disciplined. It gave me an education. It, it literally provided life for me in terms of financial and in relationships. So literally soccer, if you have done any sport, you could probably relate. And soccer is life, honestly. So that's the best way I can answer that. And do I do ab exercise on top of running? Yes. If I'm at the gym, I'm doing quad. Usually, most of the days I'm at the gym, abs, abs, no matter what. I never get enough of it, so. I hate running, how do I get into running? My recommendation is, if you hate running, I used to hate running, I love running, I can't believe I'm saying this. Set out a timer, just put your phone on, or you have a watch, just put on five minutes, for example. You don't have to do a big time, and just start jogging in your neighborhood till the timer goes off. Take your time, go within your own pace, even if you're barely moving, you're dragging your feet, that's the start. And I guarantee you with the consistent, consistency, which is the key, you're going to start being better. You're going to start finding ways that's easy for you to move and you're going to be a better runner. Someone asked um, to talk about my move from Mali to the U.S. How was that? I'm, I'm going to have to do a separate video on that because it's such a long story. It's crazy. Um, but it was interesting. It was a culture shock. How do I deal with shin splints? I only get shin splints if I run on track surface. It's really weird. That's the only time I've ever got shin splints in my life. And I can go to the track today, I'll probably get shin splints. So I don't get it much because I'm always in the streets. I'm not using the track. Um, another question was, how do I um, protect my knees as a runner? I love running, but my knee hurt. I think you should see a doctor or someone because I've never had to deal with knee problem. To be honest, I don't know how to answer that. Or go on grass, softer surfaces. Maybe that'll help with the impact on your knees. Um, and... This one was, how do I feel after reaching my goal? I feel like anything is possible. I feel like anything you want to do in life, you can do it. It made me feel that, and I'm glad I did this goal because I feel like this would be one of the hardest things I'll ever do in my life in terms of accomplishing a goal. Because the other goals now that I see, I'm like, so easy now. Because this one was on a different level. So it made me feel good. I'm happy of reaching this goal and I think that anything you guys could want to do in your life, just put your mind to it, you can do it. And I 100% will be behind that you can do it. I can attest to that. I'm sure millions of people can also. The, I was asked what device I use to listen to music. Again, get the Apple Series 3. You can, I think you can put up to 300 songs on the device itself. I don't have 300 songs. So you can take your music on a go, you don't need your phone. Or you could stream on Apple Music with this. If you don't have song on it, if you get the one with the cellular data, which will have the red dot, so you can have music streaming from Apple Music on it. All I have is my AirPods and this, and I listen to my music. And I don't only listen to music, I listen to books when I run, because at times I do get sick of music. I like to listen to books and stories, life, whatever it is, and I actually forget about that I'm running, I'm listening to the story so much that the run is, next thing you know, I'm done with six miles. So get the Apple watch or any watch pretty much that you could get that could put music on it's much easier than carrying your phone while you run 5k time my 5k time was 18 minute i've done an 18 minute 5k time and um this was done running at a six minute pace and i didn't even know how i did this because in college we would have to run just three miles which is less than 5k in 20 minutes and i was one of the guys that would start out running fast because i didn't know how to pace myself and in the end i would come in literally almost last or barely making the time or be few seconds over 20 minutes so my 5k time definitely has improved i actually put it on my instagram story if you haven't seen i did one day where i ran 5k i think i did that one in 19.9 minutes so i was averaging like six six uh six minutes and 22 seconds i believe i'm not 100 percent sure that was the time i put on my instagram and i couldn't believe that i did that because in college i would just struggle just to run three miles which was less than 5K, a little bit less than 5K in 20 minutes. So that dramatically improved for me. How do I wear when I run? In the winter, I look like an Eskimo because I would have like five layers on. I would have leggings on. On top of that, I'll have pants on. I'll have an Under Armour shirt on. I'll put on a sweater and another hoodie and a vest on top of that. I would double my gloves because one of the sensitive part of my body is when it comes to winter and the cold is my fingertips and my toes. 
not toes so much as fingertips. So I'd put on two layers of glove. I'll put on like a skinny fit glove and then a, a bigger heavy one on top of that. And in the summer or warmer weather, I still wear leggings because I feel good. I feel compressed and nicely held. And I'll put on short short and then a t-shirt. Uh, there's been days where I go with no shirt at all. And I'll just put on regular shorts. So that's my running attire pretty much. Do I work out three times a week in the gym while running? I actually, I would say it's more than that. There's sometimes I go five to six days a week. Sometimes I go five. There's days where I've only won like three times. But I'm usually in the gym to do my indoor run and do core workouts even though I run outside. Someone is, uh, this is a funny one. Do you plan on doing pull-ups for every day for 365 days? Um, I don't plan on doing that, but that would be interesting. If I do that, maybe, I don't think my, my arms would fit my shirt. I would have to get all, a whole new wardrobe, but I think you should try that actually. Let me know how that goes. That would be a cool, cool journey to check out for you to experience. My longest run was um, 12.46 miles. And I was mad because I stopped without checking my watch first and then I had to end it because to me if I stop the run is over I can't continue and if I saw that early I would have continued to actually hit the half marathon mark and um, my fastest pace that I've run was 5 minutes and 52 seconds and then um, my longest overall total run in a day I've ran three different occasions during the day I've hit 17 miles total in the beginning um, People are asking, did I keep continuing just running 10 minutes a day? In the beginning, it was just 10 minutes a day. I just did the goal just to get out of my comfort zone, just to be consistent, to hold myself accountable. Because 10 minutes was something that wasn't too hard, but at the same time, it wasn't super easy, especially for everybody, it's different. So I was only running 10 minutes a day for pretty much the whole, like the first week. And the second week, I started going a little longer, 20 minutes-ish. And next thing you know, I'm running over 40 minutes close to an hour and the distance got longer and um, if you try it you're gonna even get to a point you're gonna be like ah 10 minutes is I want to do more so start out very low and then you'll get to a point where you're gonna get out of that range and go further and longer someone mentioned on my 365 day video that he is so fit but yet he has low handles um, to answer your question I don't have low handles I'm not perfect I'm, I'm far from being perfect but what you saw there was muscle and the reason it might appear to you as love handles is because I have my short up, but this is part of my V and I'll get up to show you what that is specifically. Alright. So, as you can see, I had my short up during my video, so you can't really see my whole V. So as you pull my shorts down a little bit, this is actually not a love handle. This is muscle. So this is part of my obliques that comes down. You can see the, the shape of the muscle and you feel the skin. It's not fat, it's just muscle. As you can see on the other side, it's the same thing. So it wasn't low handles, it was muscle. Not to try to show off to anyone. I just want you to understand, don't just judge. Sometimes ask the question, is it something that it was hard for me to lose or something? But this is just all muscle. And if you don't really believe it, I'll let you know where I live. You can come and you can touch it for yourself. So I hope that answers that question for you or you're concerned about it. Oh, also someone was saying they want to see the progress of my, my legs. Um, my legs has always been big um, and some of it is genetic because my dad had big calves and whatnot. And the high calf part, everybody has told me doctors, that's genetic. Not the size of it, but the fact that my calves are high. So they're saying to show the process of my, my leg. So basically what happened is it leaned out. Like I said about my, my body weight. Um, I had big legs. Cast was always big, but it got more tone and lean out. There's more definition to it. Quads, the same thing, lean out. Um, this is the left one. The left one is actually more defined than the right one. See, I'm not perfect. This one has a little more muscle tone. This one is just a little bigger, so as you can tell. Um, what speed do I range into when I'm running? Um, I don't really pay attention to my speed. I pay attention to my flow of run. So if I'm going at a certain flow, I know that I'm running at a seven minute pace. If it's a higher flow, my body, I know it. You can feel it. As a runner, you would feel it. You would get an idea what pace you're running at. But when I'm using the curve, it shows you the number of the speed. So when I'm running on a curve, usually I'm hitting the 10, 10 miles per hour on a curve. So you can look at it. And that's the best I can answer that question. Some people have asked, I've ran 2,800 miles for the year. And the, the average would be over 7 miles. And... It's not so much every day I was running seven miles. It kind of like when I go on the curve treadmill, the indoor run was at least two miles. Outdoor, I'm hitting five miles, six miles. But there's days that I 
it's really nice out. I go eight miles outdoors, so it kind of really evened out. It wasn't like, oh, every day I'm going outside running well over seven miles. No, it's what I ran every day for the year all added up together. So this includes my indoor runs and then outdoor runs. There's days actually I've only went for a quick three mile loop, a quick 5K. And then the next day I'm running literally eight miles. So it wasn't perfectly like that. Um, so the statistic here, in the beginning I was kind of stupid. I would let my watch keep running after I'm done running because I wanted it to kind of count my recovery calories. So my average pace would be like, you're looking at like 12 minutes or some of them actually, I've seen this crazy one. It says that my average pace was 44 minutes because I let my watch keep running. And I realized I should just stop my watch immediately after I'm done running and then start another ring on my running app to get my cool calories. Um, but before, when that was the case, when I just let my watch run after going, I was averaging 12, my, uh, 12 minutes and 20 seconds a mile. But when I became smarter through half of the journey, uh, my average for the whole year was in, uh, in the high six minutes. So I have all my statistics here. This is the running activity app on my Apple Watch. And I have everything, my, the, the miles I've run in a month, and uh, the pace, and the distance, everything is in here. This is starting from May of 2017 all the way up until today. So everything is here. And I love Apple product because of that reason. Um, just to, we can do a video another day where I can show you more details if you guys want to see it close up. But I have proof of everything, which is awesome. And then, you don't really have to prove yourself to anyone. You know within yourself you're doing what you're doing. But sometimes, you know, there's these people that want to question you. So the best part is, you know what, just to calm things down a little bit, just have something to show people, even though you don't really need to. But there's always those people. So that's why I'm kind of happy that I have proof of everything for myself. I hope that I've answered all of the questions, if not most. Most of the questions were very similar, and I literally try to touch up on everything without repeating myself over and over again. Um, if you have any other questions outside of this, please feel free to comment down, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And also, you can Instagram, DM me, message me. Anyone who have, you guys know I always get back to you, even if it's a day late or two days late. I always reply to all my messages. And um, the giveaway, I haven't forgotten. And the good news is we kind of came down to what the logo is going to be for Trend Hello Good. I'm so excited about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the winner on my Instagram. Five winners. You guys are going to receive merch from me. And when I get the, the winners um, announced, I'm going to put it on my Instagram. Obviously, you'll be following me then. And I'm going to reach out to you. If you don't see my winner announcement, I'm going to personally DM you so I can get your address and where I can send you the stuff. And then I will make sure it gets to you. We're still in the process of producing everything, so it might not be immediately. It might take a little bit of time, a couple of weeks or a few weeks, but we're hoping as soon as possible we can get those to you. And again, I want to go over Train Hella Good. Train Hella Good merchandise is to train hella good. No matter what you do in life, you're training hella good. You're training like what good means within your heart, within your best. You're training like me hella good. I'm hella, but I'm not the main reason. You are the main reason. And it doesn't even have to be going out to work out. It could be, I'm going to be training hella good at my work. Basically, I'm going to do the best at my work. I'm going to literally have the cleanest house in the world today. I'm going to make sure I do that hella good. So everything, everything you do in life, basically, I want the meaning of trying hella good is to do the best you can within, your, within yourself. So don't worry about what anybody thinks, the outsiders. It does not matter. The naysayers, the yesayers, it doesn't matter for what you want and how hard you can push yourself. So I really love that meaning behind this. So if you're having, I want, I want it to get to a point where like if you're having a long day, you don't feel like doing anything, you look at Trent Hella Good, you're like, man, what would Hella do in this example? I'm kidding, but like, what would I have to do to train Hella Good? You look at it, you're like, you know what? I'm gonna get out there and train Hella Good. And I know you guys can do it. I've seen so many passion messages and people have taken step and out of their comfort zone comfort zone this is what this is all about so push yourself so we'll get to you about the merch thank you everybody for the support i really love you guys you guys are amazing you mean a lot to me i can't stress it enough and um i'm gonna do my best to show my appreciation every day which is on instagram youtube uh commenting you guys back we're chatting and one thing that is very important to me about this whole journey overall just to end everything is the friendship i've made 
I'm like thinking how much closer I am to so many strangers across the world. We literally have people we chat every single day and I'm excited to talk to you guys every single day. I never get annoyed about it. I'm never, I'm actually looking forward to the conversations and I'm thinking like, I don't know how I live my life without you guys now because it was like an empty, now I think about it, it would have been like an empty void. That's how much important this got. This, this whole journey was worth it because of the friendship and the relationship I built. It was important because of that and I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful for meeting so many friends across the world, sharing your experience, your life story with me and I get to share mine with you guys. Let's keep it going, stay strong, hella good, get after it, get out there, get yourself better no matter what. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next video. Take care.